have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup here in sunny January. Uh, we have a transgender first in U.S. politics in Minneapolis that we're going to tell you about. And an out American idol uh, has, is going to make another run for Congress from North Carolina. These are beginning to sound like Jeopardy clues. Uh, so our third headline is that Amy Schneider, the trans Jeopardy champ, surpassed a million dollars in winnings. We're keeping an eye on her. We'll tell you the latest. A lot of fun watching her. In another first, a non-binary athlete has qualified for the Winter Olympics. And maybe my favorite story of the week, a gay high school student uh, in the suburbs of Syracuse, New York, stands up against his administration's bigotry and wins. He's my, very, very charming. That's my favorite story, too. Uh, a famously anti-LGBTQ senator, uh, uh, well, his daughter has come out as bisexual. Uh, there's another Jeopardy question for you. Progress in Germany, setbacks in South Korea, Russia, and Australia. And the film and TV award season is getting into high gear with a trans actor making history. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure this qualifies as the award season kicking off, given the award, but we'll get to that. Uh, look, uh, in national news, it was uh, very good to see President Biden showing some fight this week. Uh, finally standing up against the filibuster, it's a little late, finally really speaking out directly about the uh, about Trump and the GOP's embrace of lies and violence on the 6th. Um, you know, his ask, he came in with aspirations for bipartisanship, which was insane, and, um, and they were kind of as naive as Obama's on that. Um, you have to fight fire with fire. I always go back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who when asked about the Republican do-nothing Congress said, I welcome their hatred. I welcome their hatred because they're fighting. You got to fight fire with fire. Well, uh, I wish Biden would go back to FDR's fireside chats and learn how to talk to the people and talk to the people regularly, because that's what's been missing for me. I don't care whether he does it in an angry tone or a quiet tone. I just want him to communicate more directly and simply to the people and more comprehensively. I, I sit watching these things and just writing my own speeches or conversations in my head and i i just despair at his inability to communicate in any way and to tell to tell the american people uh what they need to hear i thought the january 6th speech in the well of the congress was strong and i think that's that's the general not me i thought it was too uh, nasty. I, th I think there are much better ways to communicate, and I didn't think it was effective at all. Well, uh, attention, uh, White House, uh, Ann Northrup is volunteering to uh, write speeches. <laughs> you know, I was once asked to write a speech uh, for Bill Clinton on AIDS issues back in the 90s uh, as, as one of several people submitting drafts. And I have to say that my draft went right into the circular uh, file, the wastebasket, because I wrote a draft that was honest and direct, and nobody wants to hear that. So they that's, did that's not use that, That's generally not a winning formula in politics. No, but no. well, you know, they don't think it's a winning formula, but I think it is a winning formula. And if they would actually do that, I think they'd get a lot farther. OK, uh, well, uh, obviously, Andrea Jenkins has made an impression on her colleagues. She's a black trans woman who was elected in 2017 to the Minneapolis City Council. Now she's been elected president by, of the Minneapolis City Council, the first transgender official in the United States to lead a city council. Uh, she's focused on healing the city in the wake of the police murder of George Floyd and the conviction 
of Officer Derek Chauvin. Well, that murder of George Floyd happened in her district. And so when it happened, she, of course, became a leader in speaking out about it and about police issues. And I think taking that leadership role at that time did put her in an even more prominent position and probably gained her that support to have her end up as city council president. So congratulations to her and, uh, and to the city council of Minneapolis for electing her president. Now, somebody who's been, not been elected to anything, although he's tried, is Clay Aiken, now 43 years old, famous on American Idol 20 years ago. He's mounting a second bid for Congress from North Carolina. The primary is May 17th. And here we have his campaign video, which is kind of, you know. Hey, folks, it's been a while. Now, I know I look a little different these days, but we've met before. I'm Clay Aiken. Most of you probably remember me like this, skinny. Back in those days, I was a bright-eyed kid from North Carolina on my way to becoming a special ed teacher, and then that little singing competition changed everything for me. That was almost 20 years ago. Can you believe that? <sighs> a lot can happen in 20 years. Back when we first met, there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, thank God. There was no smartphone. The most popular cell phone in America actually looked like this. And I can guarantee you that unless you lived in Illinois, you didn't even know who this guy was. A lot has changed for me too. I came home, I came out, I became a father. These days, my life looks a lot more like yours than Justin Bieber's, that I can promise you. But one thing that has never changed for me is how much I love my home state. North Carolina is the place where I discovered first that I had a voice and that it was a voice that could be used for more than singing. You know, for decades, North Carolina was actually the progressive beacon in the South. We had the best roads and the best schools because back then the loudest voices in our government were progressives who actually made sure our state was always moving forward. But then things changed and the progressives lost power and we started getting backwards ass policies like the voter suppression bills and the bigoted bathroom bill. Because today, it seems like the loudest voices in North Carolina politics are white nationalists like this guy. My friends, I encourage you, continue to make your voice heard because do we love Donald Trump? And hateful homophobes like this one. What is the purpose of homosexuality? What does it create? And now we all know it's not just a North Carolina thing. For every Madison and Mark in North Carolina, there's a Marjorie in Georgia or a Lauren in Colorado. And these folks are taking up all the oxygen in the room. And I gotta tell you, I am sick of it. And I'll tell you something else, as Democrats, we have gotta get better about speaking up and using our voices. Cause those folks ain't quieting down anytime soon. That's why I'm running for Congress here in this community that raised me and where I first discovered my voice. We as level-headed, open-minded and compassionate Democrats, we have always been the party of all Americans. We have always been the big tent and we've got to continue to be that. Because from stopping climate change and systemic racism and income inequality and gun violence to securing voting rights and free health care and a woman's right to choose. We are the ones who are going to solve the country's biggest problems. And we are the ones who are going to defend our most precious rights. And just think how excited these guys are going to be when we elect the South's first gay congressman. <laughs> Make them proud. Uh, good luck to him. Uh, he's come a long way from the time he was defending Trump because he'd been on The Apprentice. <laughs> and saying, oh, he wasn't such a terrible guy. Uh, Clay Aiken was on The Apprentice? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, all those contestants hey. meld together. I, I appreciate his going after Madison Cawthorn and and the lieutenant governor uh, directly and by name, I think. Nick Rainbow Flags. Gutsy thing to do. Uh, and he was a, a politically minded special education teacher before he was on American Idol. So whatever. He when he ran for Congress before a few years ago, he won the Democratic primary, but lost pretty uh, uh, 
huge in a totally league. Republican district. This is a different district. I don't know the composition. Uh, well, he's uh, the incumbent Democrat is uh, resigning, stepping down. I think they have redone the district somewhat, yeah. uh, but uh, there are Democratic voters there somewhere. So primary is May seventeenth. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Now let's go next door to Virginia. Whoa! All right. For those who think that m there are such things as moderate Republicans who are. Uh, you know, not big Trump fans and who are going to be OK in office. We present the case of newly elected Governor Glenn Youngkin in Virginia. So he's picked a woman named Kay Coles James to be secretary of the Commonwealth. She had been the first black woman to lead the right wing Heritage Foundation, anti-gay, and worked for the anti-LGBTQ focus on the family as well. As secretary, she's going to be assisting Youngkin in making thousands of appointments. Um, she gave a, a charming commencement speech in 1994 at Hampton University saying, the U.S. is experiencing cultural AIDS. We as a country have been the victims of an immune system that has broken down. It's gone. Can't tell you how offensive that is. Uh, and she has a gay son and uses tries to use him as a shield, but she has openly opposed LGBTQ rights. Against the Equality Act, uh, against every LGBTQ uh, equality law. But she says, I'm a friend of the community. I have a gay son. How could I not be a friend of the community? Well, by opposing every law that would be helpful or that would promote equality, you could be a real enemy of the LGBTQ. Well, Glenn community. Youngkin has also picked uh, Trump's EPA chief, uh, Andrew Wheeler, a coal executive, uh, to be the Secretary of Natural Resources. And Democrats in the state Senate, who still have a narrow majority, are speaking out and saying, we may stop this appointment. Let's see. Well, let's see what happens there and let's see what happens around the country this year. Uh, lest you forget, there are still scores of anti-LGBTQ laws uh, proposed in states around the country and more coming. And these are, of course, uh, the anti-trans in sports bills, the anti-medical care for trans people, uh, get all LGBTQ stuff off library shelves and out of schools. All of that assault is continuing and will be the platform that Republicans run on in states all over the country. So we'll follow the most egregious of these as they go along. But they are, they are in your states everywhere. So please uh, look at those. And then from the... There's a good reason for watching out. I mean, we ju we're just learning that in uh, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, uh, they replaced, uh, they, they, they repealed their LGBT rights bill that they just passed three months ago because the, the, legis the council was flipped. It went from veto-proof Democrat to seven to three Republican. And the first thing they did was we're getting rid of that gay rights law, those Republicans. So, uh, you know, we cannot be complacent. And uh, what we should have learned over the last 50 years is that nothing is set in stone and all every advance we've made can be repealed and replaced and taken away. It's always a fight. <laughs> And then from the horrendous to the ridiculous, uh, or maybe just good news uh, is a tiny bit here, we have uh, Republican Senator Ted Cruz from Texas uh, and his 13-year-old uh, daughter, Caroline, seen on the right there, not looking very happy in the family. Is that the Christmas card? It is. It is. Uh, Caroline, in an online post, Instagram maybe, or uh, Facebook? Social media, anyway. Anyway, she came out as bisexual and as disagreeing with her father on politics, everything, and complaining about the fact that in this picture, they photoshopped it to elongate the crop top she's wearing. She was showing some midriff, but they uh, fooled around with the picture and made her look like she was wearing a far more conservative outfit. And that was, and her expression comes, 
before they did that to the picture. Why didn't they fix her expression too? Why didn't they make her smile? <laughs> anyway, she said online, she hasn't told her father that she's bi, and she's sort of <laughs> nervous about it, but I don't think he's gonna be mad about it. <laughs> now, he's gonna have to go on Tucker Carlson and uh, apologize, apologize. to his sexual daughter now. <laughs> He's probably going to, Tucker will probably get him to disown her and throw her out of the house. <laughs> well, okay. congratulations to you, Caroline. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you anytime. Okay. All right. In other uh, news around the country, uh, in New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy did sign the bill codifying marriage equality. Um, that had, which was dependent on court decisions in New Jersey. We passed a bill in New York way back you know, about a while ago, but uh, other states are having to do this because the Supreme Court could overturn the marriage decisions. And unlike in other states, the uh, uh, new governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, gave her, I guess, state of the state address. Yeah. And, and she is actually trying to win our votes by promising uh, better support uh, in the realm of hate crimes, a uh, wider ex gender option on uh, documents, better conditions and respect for trans people in prisons, better health care, better housing. Uh, she's certainly talking the talk. Our state senator, and Ann and mine, uh, Brad Hoyleman, called it refreshing, full of good ideas. The bombastic blather is gone. Uh, reference to the predecessor. Yeah, and by the way, uh, we, should say, we should say about Cuomo, he's dodging a lot of bullets. He's not getting indicted on any of these charges against him. And he's thinking about a comeback with his $18 million in war chest. I, I just don't see that happening. Do you? Uh, it's a very funny country. We have a, a disgraceful person as president of the United States. Anything can happen. I, I, let's be clear. You said had, not have. No, it's a little, a little uh, unclear. Hey, and by the way, speaking of disgraces, you know, we we talked at length on this show uh, back in uh, when uh, the Sultan of Brunei instituted Sharia law, which called for stoning gay people. He owned the Beverly Hills Hotel, so there was a big boycott. Lots of news about this, and now basically the executives are ignoring it and going to the Polo Lounge. But the boycott isn't over. Uh, well, I think I, Jenner did get thrown out of the polo lounge, though, uh, for wearing torn jeans, and she was outraged. Well, I actually am a, a new subscriber in the last few months to the uh, website or the blog about that follows uh, uh, corporations' contributions to uh, politicians and whether or not they're keeping their promises not to contribute to Republicans who tried to keep Trump in office. And there's a very mixed record. There are some corporations that are standing up to their pledges and others who are just ignoring it and going right back to uh, giving money to uh, Republicans who are doing heinous things. Okay. All right. Well, we do have, we do, we are able to celebrate um, the, well, at least as of our taping on Wednesday afternoon, uh, the continued victories of Amy Schneider uh, on Jeopardy, uh, she became the highest earning woman on the show ever, surpassing $1 million in winnings on January 7th in her 28th win. And as of Tuesday, she was still the champion. Um, she told the Associated Press. 30, 30 wins as of no, Tuesday. She told the Associated Press she uh, enjoys connecting with the parents and grandparents of younger trans people. Uh, and understands how she's making them feel better about the options these young people could have. Now, whatever happens, she's going to be back on the Tournament of Champions. The first trans contestant to qualify uh, among those she'll have to face is Madame Odio, who won 38 games. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how long this uh, streak lasts. Uh, I was interested in the, it, she talks about how uh, they ask her about prepping for this. And she said, look, you just have to live a life uh, where you're paying attention and reading and are curious about things, uh, a wide range of things. And so I have a wider body of knowledge and that's that's how I prep. You can't really uh, study everything. It turns out that she did a podcast on Downton Abbey. She <laughs> All things Downton Abbey, she was following for a while. 
she also says that it is a shock to see herself on TV, uh, although she's enjoying it. And what she would like is a career perhaps in uh, the entertainment field in writing. Uh, and I think she has some talent in that area, especially if she's been writing a blog about Downton Abbey. Uh, also, the ratings are up, uh, uh, presumably because when someone starts a streak like this, it gains a lot of interest. Certainly a lot of people we know have picked up the show who never watched it. Right. Uh, I, I was surprised to learn, I didn't know this, they do a rehearsal every night with all three contestants and they use questions from recent games. So if you get up there with her in the rehearsal, she is like clicking away. She knows them already, so she's getting them all. And they should pick questions from like the 1960s or something when my sister was on, uh, you know, so that it's not so new that, uh, that she would know all the answers. It must be very disconcerting to the other contestants. To be defeated in the practice you know, rounds, they, you just sort of look like. Well, oh, I'm sure oh, they've God. studied. I'm sure they've studied the previous games too. Well, well, it's it, I don't know because you know the show is on such a delay, uh, you know that it, it wouldn't. But be, if you're coming on as a contestant, you've studied the previous uh, years of shows. Seen them. You haven't seen them because they haven't aired. They've aired for 30 years or 50 yes, years. Well, we can go on and on about this. It, 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 it's months ago that they taped these things. Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, what she's studying and what they're studying are things that were before All right. that. Jeopardy trivia. Let's move on. Okay. Let's move on to Iowa. Uh, skater Timothy Leduc will make history as the first non-binary Winter Olympian. 31 years old, skates with Ashley Kane Gribble there. Uh, raised by evangelical parents, uh, they came out at, as gay uh, at 18, and a family member tried to perform an exorcism on them. Uh, the pair won the U.S. Figure Skating Championships qualifying for Beijing, if Beijing, in fact, comes about given what's happening with Omicron. Yeah, what's so weird about this to me is that uh, there have been, I would say, obviously gay figure skaters uh, for decades and decades. Look, I worked the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in 1973 in Providence, Rhode Island, and there were plenty of obviously gay male figure skaters uh, at that event. And the fact that it's taken them so long to be able to be open and out is uh, is shameful. Uh, but I'm glad they're finally able to come out now. And in addition to the figure skaters, uh, beyond that, in the upcoming Winter Olympics, we have, for instance, a lesbian speed skater, Brittany Bow, who competed as an out lesbian four years ago and is coming back to uh, compete again. And that's just a couple of the U.S. competitors. There are competitors from all over the world in all sorts of sports. And as we track this in the Tokyo Summer Games, we will track it in the uh, Beijing Winter Games uh, and perhaps have another team LGBTQ of people from all over the world who are out and, and see how they do with the games. All right. All right, and then you've probably seen the news about Penn uh, University of Pennsylvania swimmer uh, Leah Thomas, 22 years old, a trans champion making much news, breaking Ivy League women's records, underwent two years of hormone replacement ther uh, therapy, so that qualified her uh, under the NCAA rules. You've got now, you know, stories about, of course, Fox News shows up at all the events now to we'll make a fuss about this. Uh, but uh, Penn and Ivy League uh, support her conclusion. Um, she, do she doesn't win every race, but she's apparently going to be one of the favorites in the NCAA championships in March. Um, Martina Navratilova's Women's Sports Policy Working Group, which is hesitant about this, says trans women who've never experienced male puberty should be permitted to compete uh, with other women. Others should have a new category. Well, then I'm going to go back to, uh, shall we divide basketball competition into those over six feet tall and those under six feet tall? Uh, how far are you going to go in, uh, in corralling people with different characteristics? It's, right. 
She followed all the NCAA rules. They certainly are not uh, being lenient with people. Uh, I think we have to uh, yes. understand and, and uh, accept that uh, people are who they are. Yes, rules are rules. And certainly not every uh, female trans athlete is as successful as Leah. So someone comes along who is uniquely successful, it's going to happen across the board in every sport with all kinds of people. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, but here's our, here's our real hero of the week, uh, Tyler Johnson of Tully High School in outside Syracuse, New York. 17 years old. Uh, so he, his principal goes to him and says, well, in our school newspaper every month, we do a section, what's it called, Senior Spotlight? Yes, that's it. And we would like you to be one of the two people featured this month on Senior Spotlight. And we ask you questions and you talk about yourself and, and we write it up. And uh, Tyler said, Great, I'd love to do that because one of your questions is, what is the greatest challenge you faced and how have you overcome it? And it would be a great opportunity for me to talk about my struggles with, for myself with being gay and, and how I've been treated and, and how I've come to terms with this. And, and how he was bullied most of his life. He grew up in West Virginia and had a terrible time, was hospitalized for the strain that he was under. But the principal says, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't. We're not allowed to talk about sexual orientation or religion. <laughs> uh, the principal made that up. Yes, he did. He uh, <laughs> so Tyler got a lot of support from, uh, from the superintendent of schools, from classmates, from teachers, from everybody. Oh, wait a minute. The superintendent of schools was behind stopping this originally and told the principal he had to stop it. Uh, so Tyler tries to explain, should we run his TikTok video, which has had yes. uh, probably yes. by now 15,000 views? I would think more than that. Quick little story time. So my high school has this thing that they do it's like a monthly like newspaper issue that they put out but in all of them they do like a senior spotlight so they pick two seniors each month to do the thing and i got chosen to do it so i was like this is great like so cool right so i answer all their questions they email me like a list of questions and one of the questions was what challenges have you faced and how have you overcome them so you know i answered truthfully with the biggest challenge that i had to overcome so I said, the biggest challenge I faced was growing up gay and coming out. I had to learn how to become comfortable in my own skin and how to stay strong through bullying and all the negative experiences I had while trying to navigate through life. You know, I'm answering honestly. So then today, my principal, like, um, stops me in the hallway and is like, uh, I need to talk to you. And I was like, okay. So I didn't think of anything about it. So I go into his office and he's like, so essentially what he said, I'm going to shorten it down because we've got like two minutes left. He was like, pretty much we can't put this in. We're not putting it in. You have the option to either completely get rid of the question or rewrite it. I said, mm, better idea. Completely take me out of the senior spotlight and I just won't do it, you know? Um, he was like, oh, well, like, that's not what, like, I expected you to say. And I was like, you expect me to just be okay with the fact that you're literally censoring me and being like, I'm not putting this in here because you're gay. And then, like, I signed out because I was, like, pissed. So then my mom calls the school and, like, talks to him, and he's like, well, he can just rewrite it. Pretty much they don't want me to say that I'm gay at all or that, like, that's my biggest challenge, um, which is, like, such BS. So I was like, fine, I'm, I'm not doing it. So I call him back. Cause, so um, my mom was like, he'll tell you his final decision in the morning. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'll tell it to him right now. So I call the school, talk to him, and I'm like, um, so I know you talked to my mom, but I just wanted to know that I'm standing with my uh, first decision and I don't want to be featured in this or whatever. And he was like, but you're such a, un such a unique student, like walks our halls and like you're such a positive face in our community. And I was like, yeah, but here's the thing. There are so many kids in our community and in our school that are going through the same things that I've gone through and that I'm still going through. And then reading that for me and like seeing that in like our school newspaper would give them the courage and like, you know, give them the strength to know that like it's okay to be yourself um, but now they're not going to have that and that's your fault. So I was like, I'm not going to be published or featured in something that, um, and, and like a thing that doesn't 
like accept me and like make me feel safe and like welcome. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this unfolds because I'm not done with this. Well, how it unfolded was that the uh, the principal had to back down. He did because they figured out that he had lied about uh, the no discussion of sexuality or religion. Yep, uh, t- Tyler. Uh, said uh, he's determined to be the last student this ever happens to. He wants apologies, and he's starting to get them from the school superintendent and the principal. Um, he said uh, an elementary school social worker at the, at the, in the district was forced to remove mention of his husband from his bio. You can't do that. I mean, we have laws in this state against this kind of discrimination. Uh, so... He was. He returned to the school, and he was greeted by the other students with rainbow flags waving. And thank you, Tyler. We appreciate that kind of uh, courage and outspokenness, and we wish everybody would uh, take that kind of stance. Uh, we're glad that you have found the self-respect to act that way. Okay. A uh, disturbing story uh, against a trans activist in uh, Denver. Uh, activist uh, Sire, S-Y-R-E, Clenky, was attacked by a stranger there in an apparent hate crime. No robbery, just a beating. Uh, the, there's a big push to investigate because there is CCTV footage. Clenky had previously survived an attempt at conversion therapy. And in Pontiac, Michigan, a uh, terrible story mm-hmm. of uh, domestic violence, uh, Rory Teasley uh, was at home with his uh, partner, Daquen Watkins. They've been together for 10 years. They got in a fight over a video game they were playing, and Daquen killed Rory, strangled him to death. Uh, uh, Rory was a social media influencer of some prominence, and, and this is just a terrible, stupid uh, story. Watkins charged with second degree murder. Teasley was well known for his dancing videos on Instagram and uh, Pump 2, Pump 4 TV. He had 58,000 followers. And when, when when they first heard about his death, they didn't know how he died. And there was just this outpouring of uh, 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 just horror. We told you a week or two ago about a tragic death of an unidentified trans woman in Houston, Texas. She now has been identified, Zaniah Williams, 21 years old, uh, the victim of a hit and run uh, car uh, attack, uh, was killed on December 20th uh, last year. Well, I mean, she's originally from Pasadena. Her her last post on December 19th was, this is my last year people treating me like I don't matter. This is my last year thinking I'm not good enough. And she was about to start college and planned on a career as a lawyer. She died the next day, struck by two cars. One of them, the second one, which is uh, stopped, but the first one, you know, hit and run. All right. Let's go back to uh, Dallas. A lesbian couple there is charged with, in the st- they were charged with the stabbing death of a former roommate, 23 years old. They got out on $500,000 bond and they were under house arrest. But these two cut off their ankle bracelets and the authorities didn't figure it out for 10 days. So that's Nina Morano, 50 years old, and her wife, Lisa Dykes, uh, 58. Their alleged victim was last seen on October 2020, Marissa Botello Valadez. Uh, her remains were found in March 2021. A co-defendant, Charlie Beltran, Marissa's former boyfriend, remains in jail, can't afford half a million dollars bond. And uh, wow, what kind of resources do they have that they can blow off a half a million dollars and go on the run? Uh, he, the, uh, the accused in jail, was the roommate of the lesbian couple. Right. He evidently met the victim in a bar, and uh, somehow, in the midst of all this, uh, she ended up dead, and they're all accused. Uh, so watch out. Uh, also in Texas, uh, better news, a court has ordered a federal prison there to consider uh, surgery for a trans inmate who is so 
uh, depressed about uh, gender dysphoria, that she is suicidal. Uh, and so the court says, you know, this is treatment. You, you really have to take seriously the need to provide her this surgery. This is Christina Nicole Iglesias, 47. And the judge said, it's cruel and unusual punishment, but you're doing to her. Stop it. Yeah. Uh, and then in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, young trans woman, uh, Duval Princess, 24 years old, shot dead. Uh, she was a parent to nine younger siblings who she was taking care of, and she worked as a hairstylist. Right. Another okay. huge loss. And, and speaking of losses, we have a couple of uh, non-LGBT losses, but people uh, we admire. Lonnie Guineer uh, has died at 71 of Alzheimer's, most famous for getting uh, her nomination by President Bill Clinton to be Assistant Attorney General for voting rights, polled by him when Republicans objected, and some Democrats, because she wanted to give more weight in voting to minority interests given the history of discrimination. Uh, Clinton folded like a cheap suit, just as he did when he fired Jocelyn Elders, uh, when, when she spoke out about masturbation and safe sex. Uh, so Guineer, not a lesbian, but a revered legal scholar, became the first woman of color to get tenure at Harvard Law School. Uh, earlier, she led the Voting Rights Project at the NAACP for a decade, after which she taught at Penn. Uh, gay that's, law that, that's her with Rosa Parks. She, she was such an original thinker. And that, of course, was unacceptable to the conventional politicians who couldn't have that around. And much, much, much admired by her gay students, including our friend, gay uh, law professor Darren Rosenblum, uh, who had her at Penn, uh, who supported his work on LGBTQ voting rights, uh, she uh, he said was unparalleled. Yeah. And of course, uh, Sidney Poitier, uh, 94 years old, died in the uh, Bahamas, which is where he was originally from. Actually, he was born in Miami, but his uh, family was just visiting, and he grew up in the Bahamas. Uh, you know, a civil rights uh, activist, uh, the first black man to win a best Oscar, although I, I sort of resist some of that, since he was certainly not the black, first black person to win an Oscar. Uh, well, I mean, Hattie McDaniel was 1939, and so it took until 1963 to honor another black actor. And then I, I can't, it took another tremendous amount of time to honor another one. I, I completely agree. I don't want to undermine any kudos for him, but I don't want us to lose Hattie McDaniel in the process. No. Uh, you know, I, I loved him in Lilies of the Field, for which he won the Oscar, and of course, The Heat of the Night. Every time you see that time, he slaps that white racist rich guy, and he insisted on, on that being in the film, and he said he wanted it in the contract, you can't take that scene out anywhere that you show this film, and it was just stunning. 1967, I believe. Um, and he played Mandela later in life. I'm impressed how he came to New York and he was basically illiterate and he was trying to make a go of it in acting and he found somebody at a restaurant who helped him learn how to, uh, to uh, read. It was tremendous. He was very close to Paul Robeson and of course, Harry Belafonte. Yes. Uh, also one note before we go to uh, international news, Delta Airlines refused to book a passenger who identifies as non-binary and has official papers with an X gender marker. And when they tried to, you know, make a reservation, the Delta agent said, oh, I'm sorry, you have to uh, book as either male or female. And they said, I, I can't get through the TSA as male or female. My official papers ha are marked with an X. That's one of the things Governor Hochul in New York is trying to fix with state agencies. Yes, you can get documents, the birth certificate, your, uh, that say X, but the agencies aren't dealing with it, so they all have to re-gear. Well, Delta has now promised that they will change this by the fourth quarter of 2022. <laughs> well, guess what? Right they there. promised the same thing four years ago and did nothing about it. All right. I think, I think they could change it a little faster. Uh, 
in international news. Yeah. In Canada, uh, this past week, the ban on conversion therapy went into effect. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau tweeted, it is now illegal to promote, advertise, benefit from, or subject someone to this hateful and harmful practice. Uh, LGBTQ rights or human rights. Now, this covers both children, like the most of the U.S. laws, but also adults. Good. Uh, good news from Germany, where Sven Lehmann, or Lehmann, of the Green Party, 42 years old, has been appointed the first commissioner for the acceptance of sexual and gender diversity and has been charged with coming up with a national action plan. Why don't we have a cabinet post like that? He is on the board of the Magnus Hirschfeld Foundation. He's okay. In South yeah, Korea, yeah, I would like to see that in this country. I'm not holding my breath. In South Korea, a gay couple has lost a suit versus the state health insurer over spousal coverage. Uh, there they are, uh, So Seong Wook and uh, Kim Young Min. Uh, they sued in February 2021. The court ruled matrimony is a union between a man and a woman, and that gay relationships cannot fundamentally be seen as equal. The insurer does recognize, however, common law marriages, and the couple is vowing to appeal. A small uh, point of light from Senegal, where the legislature has rejected a bill to double the prison terms for gay sex. Uh, currently, it's five years. Uh, the proposal was to make it 10 years in prison. The legislature refused to do that. So now you're only facing five years for gay sex in Senegal. In uh, Australia, there's an out a footballer, soccer player, Josh Cavallo there of the Adelaide United, 22. He was subjected to homophobic abuse in a recent match with Melbourne. Um, he expressed extreme disappointment, but said hate will never win and he will never apologize for living his truth. The league condemned it. Melbourne vowed to ban fans that engage in it. And so what happens subsequently? He's getting death threats now. Exactly. A uh, couple of stories from Mexico. At the uh, Mexico City Six Flags uh, amusement park, uh, activists held a kiss in uh, after a gay couple there visiting the park was reprimanded for kissing each other, standing in a line waiting for a ride. Uh, and the park has backed down and has dropped its what it claims was its no affection policy, which of course was observed in the breach uh, for straight couples. And then in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, there is news that cops in Puerto Vallarta are extorting LGBT tourists. They wait outside of nightclubs, they pick up the uh, gay tourists, uh, threaten to arrest them for disturbing public order, and then escort them to the nearest ATM machine uh, for the uh, handing over of cash uh, in order not to be arrested. Uh, the gay penguins in Sydney uh, have marked their third anniversary. Sven and Magic hatched their first chick, Lara, back in 2018, and Clancy in 2020. They're quite a pair. <laughs> Yeah, well, whatever. I had something to say about that, but I forgot what it was. Uh, in uh, the Vatican, uh, you may remember recently that their Office of the Doctrine of the Faith or whatever put out a statement saying that God cannot, cannot bless sin, meaning... Uh, no ceremonies for gay couples. Right, and uh, uh, yes. Well, the Pope has now demoted the Archbishop, who is the author of that statement. He's not even getting an archdiocese. He's just getting a diocese. <laughs> well, I think the Pope could do more, but... Uh, oh, please! <laughs> whatever. It's one step yeah. at a time. In Russia, the Russian police raided a safe house uh, in Russia and arrested two LGBTQ men who escaped from the Republic of Chechnya and handed them over to Chechen authorities. Uh, they are 20 and 17. They escaped in June. They've been, already been arrested and tortured there by the police. And now they're in imminent danger of torture and death. So this group, All Out, is calling on Secretary Blinken of the United States to demand their release. I'll put a link to that in our email. 
The European Court of Human Rights has rejected uh, the suit filed by the Belfast activist Gareth Lee against the Christian bakers who wouldn't make him a cake uh, with the slogan on it, support gay marriage. The uh, European Court of Human Rights said that the, uh, dismissed the suit on a technicality, you submitted it the wrong way or to the wrong people. Uh, but generally, generally, uh, in this country, certainly, uh, the baker would have the right to reject a particular political yes. slogan on the I case. Agree. So I don't know that Gareth Lee is going to get much farther with that. In Canada, they're promising to resettle LGBTQ uh, Afghans and female judges uh, who are obviously under assault back there. So far, they've resettled. Uh, they they say they're going to take a total of 40,000. They've done about 6,500 overall, uh, but they seem to be doing more than we are. And also in London, uh, sad news of the death of David Stewart, uh, who was uh, an activist for uh, government and attention and resources to people addicted to recreational drugs uh, and sex, m mainly gay and bisexual men, uh, known for his great compassion and his, uh, his struggle, his real dedication to taking people beyond shame and beyond addiction. He's the guy who coined the term chemsex, and he was an expert on that internationally. And the, again, the outpouring of grief over his sudden loss uh, has been tremendous. He worked at the 56 Dean Street Clinic there in London, but all over the world. All right, are we ready for entertainment news? Well, uh, uh, well, I just was. I just want to say I was encouraged to read that in Uganda they're doing so well with getting people on AIDS drugs that life expectancy is increasing beyond pre-AIDS levels, which is very, very encouraging. Well, I saw a story like that in the Times about uh, uh, Zambia, too, I think, a, a reporter who uh, went back to the country after 20 years and talked about the difference in, uh, yep. in the situation there. Uh, yes, it's nice to know that some of that is actually... Oh, and by the way, in Canada, COVID vaccinations quadrupled after uh, the province required proof of vaccination to buy marijuana and booze. Hey. We're trying all sorts of things. I approve of that. All right. Uh, in entertainment news, well, not very entertaining, the return of the series Cheer, season two on Netflix, brings us a very stunning story. Uh, those who, this is a documentary about cheerleading competition centering on one junior college in Texas, and the second season brings us uh, competition with the, the neighboring junior college, too. It's very hot and heavy. But one of the stars of the first season was a guy named Jerry Harris, who got a lot of the spotlight. Very, uh, I thought, overly enthusiastic uh, guy, a little inappropriate. Well, it now turns Very inappropriate, out, it turns out. Exactly, because he has been charged by... Uh, uh, twin boys with uh, uh, sexual abuse. He's been charged with child pornography. He's been charged with uh, seducing uh, younger boys into sex. Uh, he's now 22. He was 18 when he was having sex with these twins. And I'm, uh, you know, the the young guys he was targeting were in their sort of mid-teens. So I'd call this a little bit of a fuzzy line, but the series is gonna deal with this. Evidently in uh, episode five of season two, they spent, devote the entire hour to this. Uh, and they've already made reference to it in the first couple of episodes, which I've watched. Uh, and the series is kind of compelling anyway, but this takes it to a whole different level. And it's very sad, of course, to uh, see this guy uh, go down this path and very upsetting for everybody else around him. Right. Uh, right. The, uh, uh, the Golden Globes uh, bedeviled by controversy so much that they were tweeted out this time, no party. But history was made. MJ Rodriguez of Pose became the first transgender actor to win one. Um, 
She Best was. actress in a TV drama series uh, uh, and very happy and celebrating. <laughs> I have to say that everybody else was really not wanting to get any awards from this organization because right. it is in such disrepute. But she's hopeful that it will, you know, uh, inspire a lot of young, well, she says, I'm a young black Latina girl from Newark, New Jersey who had a dream and hopes others will as well now. And people thought maybe off of that that she would get a SAG nomination. She did not. There's uh, hardly anything LGBT in them other than Murray Bartlett uh, nominated for White Lotus and yeah. you know Ewan McGregor in uh, uh, for playing Halston, which was a gay role. He's not gay himself. Uh, and Power of the Dog, which uh, won some Golden Globes and has got some SAG nominations. Uh, I, you know, it sort of left me cold, but my union, uh, hmm? my union. Well, I'm talking about the movie, not the. Yes. Union. No, I'm just saying some people are co really complaining, but I, I wasn't on the nominating committee. Um, uh, but I'm happy that Hacks, the Gene Smart show, is uh, getting some attention. I love that. I I would highly recommend Hacks. But the other, <laughs> I have another one to recommend. Dairy Girls. Have you seen Dairy Girls? I, I tried to watch it last year, uh, but oh it my god, it's hilarious! It is hilarious. It is uh, season three is coming sometime soon. In Northern Ireland, yes. Northern Ireland in London, Dairy, Dairy, Northern Ireland. It is. It's a high school girls' uh, adventures, and they are so funny. And this show is so well done. It's just half hour episodes. Six episodes in the first season, six episodes in the second season. You can get through it in a flash. And it, if I were rolling on the floor, I would be rolling on the floor on this series. It is so clever and so funny. I really recommend Dairy Girls, D-E-R-R-Y, Dairy and we, Girls, and we on Netflix, it. on Netflix. We haven't previewed it, but The Gilded Age by the creators of Downton Abbey. Uh, is coming to HBO Max January 24th, set in New York, 1882. Uh, this is sort of old money and new money uh, at the time. Among the stars there, you can see Cynthia Nixon in the yellow dress there, um, and Christine Baranski, uh, but also Nathan Lane is in it, Michael Cerverus, gay, Douglas Sills, gay, but it also stars Audrey McDonald uh, uh, and Patrick Page. So, um, it's sort of an upstairs, downstairs thing, very much like Downton Abbey. Well, it's another one of these Julian Fellows shows. So uh, we mostly like those, although how many times can you do this? Uh, <laughs> but, but certainly enough potential interest to take a look. Also, uh, in an entirely different vein, Bridget Everett's show starts this weekend on HBO. The great cabaret performer, very bawdy, as they say, and it's a sort of a semi documentary because she's from Manhattan, Kansas. And this is the story of her in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, it's not, as I say, it's not a documentary, but it's it really is about her life. And she stars in it with a lot of other uh, funny, cool people. So that's uh, it's called, I think, Somewhere Someday, something like that on uh, HBO this weekend on uh, Sunday. Also, uh, <laughs> the NFL playoffs are starting. I know you're excited about that, Andy. I always turn the I always turn the Super Bowl on when I want to do my tax receipts for the year. <laughs> well, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders have made the uh, playoffs by the skin of their teeth in the last game of the regular season, which means out gay Carl Nassib is in the playoffs. Uh, Las Vegas is not given any chance of uh, advancing beyond the first round, but they play at Cincinnati, the Bengals, on Saturday afternoon at 4.30 Eastern. Anything can happen. Well, anything could happen because the New York Times uh, today on Wednesday did a column uh, entitled, Why Nobody is Going to Win the NFL Playoffs. And they went through team by team and wrote about everything that was wrong about every single team. And it's very funny. And I think one of my favorite lines was, they're writing about one team and their regular season record. And they say, you know, they beat all these teams that 
uh, were not going to make the playoffs, and then they lost to all the teams that were going to make the playoffs. But we're pretty sure that the teams that are going to play in the playoffs are the teams that made the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got all that? <laughs> so we don't think they're going to do well in the playoffs. It was very funny. Okay. Anything else? I, I have I have a story I set aside. No, go right ahead. Go During right aces, ahead. well, we have a new Trumpian, uh, uh, new city council member from Queens, Vicky Palladino, 67, who refused refuses to show proof of vaccination to enter city hall. Showing papers? What is this Nazi Germany? <laughs> she <laughs> she said, is she is our local Marjorie Taylor Green, and I cannot said, wait. Cannot she wait. Said her vaccination status is personal. Meanwhile, the rest of us have to show them to go to a restaurant in New York. Now, even Trump said this week, whether you got the shots or the booster or not, just be honest about it. So maybe she'll take some inspiration from her master. Well, she's going to be highly entertaining in the New York City Council for the next few years, and <laughs> unless she gets thrown out or quits before then. But she's quite a trip. Uh, and again, you wonder how these people get elected, but uh, there she is. Uh, she, I'm not sure I should admit this, but occasionally, because I, well, here's the first thing I shouldn't admit, I don't have a smartphone. Uh, so I don't have my vaccination record on a phone to show people. I carry around my little uh, cardboard card, uh, protected with a little uh, sandwich bag uh, package. But I occasionally forget to take it with me when I'm going out to a place where I have to show it. And I have shown up a couple of times at yeah. restaurants and and realized only when I got there that I forgot to, Mine. yes, Mine's falling apart, but I got a case for it. Well, I think the case is an excellent idea, and I should do that. But uh, the first time, I was rejected by the restaurant and told no. And then some of my friends came out from the restaurant to chat with me. And eventually, the restaurant staff, realizing that I was not entirely a crazy person, said, OK, you can go in and uh, and I was led into another restaurant uh, this weekend again I, with a bunch of friends. You can, you can get a an Excelsior Pass New York that you can download and print out if you want a fresh one. I we can we can work it out and I'll print it out for you. Thank you, Andy. But it would raise the same problem, which is, do I remember to take it with me? Oh. <laughs> All right, we have twenty seconds. Thanks for everybody for being with us. Um, uh, um, <laughs> Andy at a loss for words. No, I mean, I forget, there's so many things happening in the world. Uh, it's it's all very depressing, but uh, it uh, is. You know, uh, we're but we love you, and we will see you next week. We are gone now.